So, what were we speaking, discussing last week? Remembering? Which type of moves? We were speaking about... Yes, Adi? Forcing moves. Forcing moves. And actually, in, in a type of intermediate moves, right? We mentioned that there are forcing moves and so on. So, instead of just repeating what we said, let's look at more puzzles that have, well, very big similarity to last week ones. And I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to allow you to tell me well, what do you think is the best move, for example, for white in this position? You will raise your hand, and then I will see usually two, three, four hands, and then I will allow someone to answer. I want everyone to think. So if you have an answer, raise your hand, and yes? Rook takes B8 check. OK, Rook takes B8 check. And then after he's going to take the Rook, Okay, so then you will take the rook on f6. Why not take immediately the rook on f6? Because then a takes b3. So that will be just exchanging of rooks, right? Yeah. And in the way that you've suggested, rook takes b8, check. white is going to win material? Yeah. How much? Three points. Exactly. Exactly. And that is basically what we just mentioned as an intermediate move, something between the series of captures, we want to have, we, we see that there are several captures in the position. We see that there are several captures, but how to benefit the most from that? That's the big question. If we will simply say, whoa, yay, there is a rook, free rook. Well, we have to think about our opponent move each and every time. Okay. Actually, not only white got nothing, well, this pawn can be dangerous. Okay, it cannot advance right now. But maybe in some situation, the knight can come and support it. Maybe the knight can come and support the advance of the pawn or shut the bishop away. Well, white has to be careful moving his pieces so the pawn is not going to just become a queen. Yet, rook takes b8 is just winning the game immediately. We are taking with a check. And after king take, white is a piece up. Excellent. So check is one is the most forcing move, right? Because by the rules of the game, the opponent has to has to react to it. Okay. We have done several of those. Let's do let's do one easy one and then some more. Well few easy and then few difficult. Let's say this was the position. Let's first start if it's white to play. Which move should white play here if it's white to play? Yes, Adi? Please take rook on g8. Well, it's the only piece it can take. Queen takes rook and then some piece is going to Okay, and then what will you will play? Okay, so instead of just playing, instead of playing immediately the move, rook take rook, where the opponent is just going to take that, that is take, when the opponent is going to take the queen, and that's basically exchanging. Okay, well, white can still take a pawn, but you want first to play queen takes on g8, and after take, you won a rook. Okay, excellent. Now let's flip the board. Whenever we are solving a puzzle, whenever we are solving a puzzle, we want to look at it from the side that is to play. So now we flip the board, and it's black to play. And what is the best move for black in this position? The very best move for black. Bless you. Okay, I understand the idea, but now let's see. If you will play this move, we spoke here and mentioned many times, many times, that's excellent for, it, it's not a right move, but we are going to bring back a topic that I said, we have to mention it thousand times or more. Does white have to take your rook? <laughs> you gave the rook. We don't have to take what the opponent is giving. For example, if 
white is to play in this position, why wouldn't white take the queen, take the queen, you will take now his queen, and then he will take your rook and he won a rook. So white will choose what he want to take, how to take. You are correct in a sense that if white was forced to take the rook, your move is very smart, but he is not forced to do that. So rook h1, white doesn't have to take. Yes? You want to answer? Queen two. No? You wanted to add? Yeah. Queen takes f1. That's interesting, this move. It's almost working. But now let's, let's think. And let's think, let's see if we can play the right way even without moving the pieces. I will be nice and put an arrow. Queen takes rook. This is the idea of black, to take the rook. What should white play here? What should be the best move for white? Yes? Uh, rook the other rook recaptures. The other rook recaptures. Hmm. Yes? Queen takes g8. Queen takes g8. Okay, Let, we have to, at any given moment, count, count the material on the board. We have to. We have to. White, black took a rook. Black took a rook. If you will just simply recapture, maybe it's the best move, but if it's, it's the best move, then white is lost. If you will simply recapture, then black will capture the queen, and black is up a rook. Black, walk, black won the rook that was here. He's up a rook. So it's actually now white's turn to say, hey, before I'm going to capture your queen, and then you can capture my queen for free, I can capture your rook with a check, a check. Black cannot move his queen, cannot capture white rook. He has to capture back and then, and white won the rook. So now it's equal material. He lost this rook before and he won that one. This, this is exactly the type of intermediate move that we are doing here. Yes? So, Queen takes c2, you win a pawn. There's something better. Yes? Queen a5 check. Check. Basically, whenever we play a game, this, this is going to be, you know, I don't know how many of your games I'm going to see. Next year, next two years, next five years, next ten years. Hopefully you will play for much more. And maybe I will even get to see a lot of those games. You will have endless amount of games that many pieces will be under attack. And many times very, very high value pieces. There are no high, higher value pieces than the queens. And both queens right now are under attack. Both queens are under attack. Black's queen is under attack from this rook and white queen is under attack from this rook. Both queens are under attack. Just capturing is going to give black nothing. So what should black's first objective be? Black should think, if I can move my queen away, but not allowing white to move his queen, or white will pay a price for it, then it's very good for me. Not just moving the queen. If you're just going to move the queen, if you're just going to move the queen, OK, white is just going to move his queen. You didn't gain anything in that way. But if you can move your queen without allowing white to move his queen, then you will win a lot of material. And what is the most forcing move in chess? The most forcing one? Yes? Check. A check. You know, you can threaten your opponent queen. He doesn't have to do something. Most likely he will do something, but he doesn't have to do something. Sid, you can sit here. You can threaten checkmate. OK, maybe he's going to have something more forced. But when you threaten check, that's it. 
the opponent has to react by the rules of the game. He has to. He has to either move, block, or capture. He has to. So if your queen is under attack and the opponent queen is under attack, also if it lower value pieces, your first objective will be how can I move my queen without allowing the opponent to move. And that's why queen a5 is winning nothing but the queen. It's winning the queen. You just threaten a check. The king is going to move somewhere for free, pretty much for free. That, that, that is the best types of intermediate move that we can have. What should I play? C4. But black can just move his bishop now. But the queen, the queen here is protected, so you, you're, it's not even a pin that you're gonna win something. Okay. Yes. What should I play? Um, rook, rook takes knight on f6. That's also a decent move to consider. Yes. Anyone else? Yes, Adi? B3. B3. That's also a move. Yes? But look at 4, I can just take it. But if look at 4, the pawn is just going to take your rook. You're just going to give quite a lot of material. You don't want to just give quite a lot of material. Adi? Okay, the king is going to move. Then what? You win a knight. You take the knight? So why, why, why aren't you taking the knight right now? Um, because white can give, I mean black can give discover check if we don't, um, you know, give. But very, very good. Check. Very, very good. Very, very, very good. That's why you suggested b3 before, right? But you found a better way than B3. One second. One second. That, that, that's very, very good. Look. C4 is actually, is actually losing. Why C4 is losing? Exactly because of the same idea that we mentioned before. Black can just move his bishop and he's going to be OK. But black is going to move the bishop to E4. And black is threatening check and threatening the queen. And the king cannot move to defend it. And if the rook moves, we will just take. The rook wouldn't be able to capture because it will be Absolutely. pinned. It will be pinned, exactly. So this is going to cost you a queen. The first question that White should ask himself, first question that White should ask himself is, there is a free knight, always. When you play chess, first things to look, forcing moves that are sometimes going to be checked, but nobody won a game of chess saying, well, I checked my opponent 10 times and he resigned. It doesn't work that way. Check gives you something, and from that you want to get something. But you can't say, oh, I captured two rooks. I was two rooks up, and then I won the game. So first question to ask is, what happens if you going to take the knight? You have a, I, I know what. You, you have a knight for free. So if you play a game, and we actually mentioned it before. We mentioned it in all previous classes. When you see a position that you can capture something for free. Your first instinct should not be, yay, I can take the knight for free. What should be your first instinct? Yes. Why can't I capture the knight for free? What, what there is, I, I, know, I know the answer. What there is that I don't see. You have to be very, very suspicious. Well, wha wha why can't I capture it? It looks really great. That's the answer in this position. Some positions, by the way, what happens if you can capture something and you do not find any reason why you should not capture it? Then you should capture it. 
If there is a reason that you didn't know, well, you better study more for next time. And if there is no reason, then you are just capture something for free. So here we are looking at this position. And that is going to be our next topic. It's excellent. What happens if we capture the night for free? Well, then Adi kept mentioning the bishop is going to take the pawn on a2. Check. And what is so important about this check? Nobody is protecting. Yes. And how can we spot those things? We first have to spot pieces that are not pieces that are not protected, and then how can we attack them? White is going to take the bishop. Bless you. And then the, take the, queen. the queen is going to be captured. Exactly. Yeah, winning material. You know how to win chess games, right? Winning material is a big start. So white is going to play. So now look what white needs to find. White wants to take the knight. It's very simple. You just, well, it's very simple the way of thinking, sometimes not finding an answer. If you think correctly, you will tell yourself, OK, so I want to capture this knight for free right now. And I want to avoid l losing the queen to a discover. So you can say, oh, I'm going to move my queen. OK, beautiful. Here, move your queen. And I will capture the knight. But what do you think? The opponent is going to stand there looking pretty and just waiting for you to capture yeah, the knight? He so he will move his knight. So we want to be able to move our queen in a forcing way and yeah, not check. allow him to move his knight. And for that, we need a check. So we find check. Black is going to move is king, and then we're going to take. Let's look at one very, very nice puzzle. Last one about intermediate moves, about all those checks, captures, forcing moves. And then we will tiny bit start looking at discover check. I didn't know this already. OK, this is a really cool position. I really, really like it. White is to play here. I want to see, I'm going to give you two, three minutes here. I want to see if white, if you, well, I know why, how I should play. I want to see if you, one of you, can tell me the entire continuation how I should play, not just one move. OK, I, I will let you answer first, but I want to see more hand. What should be the entire continuation for white in this position? Uh, OK, I, I want to see hand. Whoever has an answer, you will answer first. But Yep. Yeah. You 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 tell me. You want to take the pawn? No. Okay. The rook will take, and then you take the queen. Okay. No, not bad. You want a pawn. You want a pawn. Okay. Wait. You want a pawn. Not bad. Now. The same way that we said, the same way that we said, hey, whenever we have a good move, good idea, something that we think gonna win a lot, gonna win material, we have to think what the opponent will play. On the same line, we have to think what we have to think. Do we have something better? We have to think if we have something better. The fact that you see something that is OK, you won a pawn. You play this and you're winning a pawn. Maybe you have something. I, I, 
Maybe you have, you have something better? What do you have better? This time. Okay, queen takes bishop. Now wait. So you want to take the bishop. Okay, so a capture. Basically same story as one of the puzzles that we were looking before. Two queens under attack. This will happen in many, many of your games. Whether it will be two queens under attack, other big pieces under attack. Just, just happen. Two rooks, a bishop, or it, it happens many, many, many times. It's okay. Okay, so what will happen if we will take the bishop? Now, if I will take, you will take the queen. Okay, but black can play. Black will take the bishop himself. Let, let's see, I'm just going to put arrows. Yes, what will you play then? Take. Black will say, oh, okay, now both queens are under attack. I don't want to take and let you take my queen for free. I will take your bishop. So, so then if you will take my queen, that's what black is saying, I will take yours and we just exchange. Do you have a smart move then? Yes, what? Very good. Very, very good. And by the way, that's already thinking three moves ahead, two and a half moves ahead. Queen takes that, that was so, so, exactly, queen takes two. That's why it's so, so important. You know, that's what basically makes differences from chess class. How many moves we can think ahead. Look, take, 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 check, check, once again. Two times in a row, the queens are under attack, both of them. And what is going So now, Adi is going to remind me what's going to be our next topic. Discovered, discovered checks. And what, what is the idea of a discovered <laughs> check? Adi, you tell me. Since the idea is actually, um, you, you give a check, but also you're attacking another piece. You give a check and you're attacking another piece. So. What is the goal? The goal is like in many, many other goals is to? Win is to win material. The goal, like many, many other positions, would be to win material. For example, we can have, you know, le let, me, let me give you, I, I will make it tiny bit tricky, but this is one of the most important patterns in chess. This is the position. And it is black to play. This is tricky. I would suggest you to take a little bit time thinking here. Should black capture this pawn or not? This is really a very, very important pattern. Well, why not? That's but actually the that but that was actually perfect. But that was actually perfect. But where where is the black queen going to be? I, you you use the word eventually, and instead, instead, what we should see is this: we should be very very concrete when we can analyze something, right? When we can analyze something clearly. We have to be very concrete. It's like, I always, I, I like this example actually. Many people say right things, but meaningless. What, what for example, the right thing, but meaningless means? If you ask someone how much is five times five, and he tells you it's more than 10, but less than 100, is he correct? Yes. But it's meaningless. Okay, beautiful. So when we look at something in chess, it's first of all, sometimes we cannot actually say, hey, this is it. And doesn't matter if it's a beginning, a master, a grandmaster, or the world champion. Just, it's just impossible. And it doesn't matter even if you're a computer that calculates one billion position or whatever more per second. Sometimes there are just so many possibilities. Well, we each get our evaluation of thinking, well, white's better, black better, same way that a computer will always show what he's thinking. But it's not concrete. 
But our aim should be always to get as concrete as possible. Why say that you were correct but should have dropped the word eventually? Because if black will take, well, should we look at captures, false captures? We have to. So white will capture. So now black can do whatever he wishes, but he lost two points of material. He can do whatever he wishes. Or he can take, and then exactly what you mentioned is correct. Exactly. One of the most important, basically the most, together with another discovered check, most important discovered pattern in chess. Check, and where is the queen? The queen is on d4, not on d8. So that is excellent. The same, by the way, would be absolutely correct if, if there was no castle. <coughs> Why if there was no castle? It would be exactly the same thing. Because the bishop would go to where? The bishop would go to b5 for the knight castle. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And how many of those are happening in chess games, in young kids play? Infinity. Endless. You know, you name it. Take, take, take. Okay, black won a pawn. His queen is undefended. Check. And winning the queen. Exactly that pattern. And you re it's really on this pawn that's being undefended. Yes, Adi. In this position, if, if the queen was, was if you wanted to block, then the queen should be the seven. Uh, right, but the bishop goes to b5, and the queen should be seven. And the queen should be seven. Yes, but, but is it? Yes, you're right. So black is not going to lose a queen for a pawn. He's going to lose a queen for a bishop and a pawn. But we as chesslers do not care about that, right? Yes. It's the, you wanted to say something for? No? 95 for whom? Yeah, but, but like right now is a possible move? Like when 95? For white or for black? This move? Wait. Let me allow white to move. One second. You mean this move? OK. But actually, now maybe black indeed can take. Because now no problem. It's, def it's defended and just for example. OK, if, if it's white to play, by the way, probably his best move just objectively. Let's say it was a game of two strong players. Maybe rook c1 is a decent move, bringing the rook to an open file. Probably bishop e4 is also deserve a lot of attention. Oh, just very good spot for the bishop. By the way, does anyone know the name of this pawn? Yes? A deep pawn, but something more about a deep pawn. It's not just a deep pawn, it is. Yes? Yes, but in this specific position it gets a different one. It's the same. In old notation, they instead of, they didn't have the files, A, B, C, so they just named it based on the original pieces. Yes? Isolated. Isolated. <sighs> yes. So al almost exploding, right? OK. It's isolated. Isolated deep on. It's, it's a big term interest. A and because we get, we get such a structure for many, many openings. Actually, many of the best players in the world pretty much have Kasparov and Karpov and Carlsen and Anand, everyone, and Kramnik, every world champion has played many, many, many different games in his life with this structure, whether white or black. What does it mean isolated? There is no pawn from left side, no pawn from the right side, white pawns, no pawns. But there is at least one pawn on the side from the opponent. At least one of those pawns is there blocking this pawn to advance. Usually, now, now we will go to national geography. Is it better to be in a group, or is it better to be alone? If you are trying to survive in nature. What do you think? Alone? <laughs> My goodness. Alone? You, you, you don't want to see some hungry 
some angry wild dogs or I don't know other types of animals if you're in nature no we w you want to be in a group you want to be you want to be in a group we, we will recommend some natural na some National Geographic TV no we want to be in group because then it's not very easy for example to a predator to attack an innocent deer or whatever so there, it, it's much better tiny bit the same we will take you to chess a bit less violent but yeah broken ponds or broken pond structure pond islands is, is not you don't want to have many because this pond is alone it's a weak pond just, just this was just three minutes about n general chess knowledge isolated pond and isolated pond are considered weakness because they are alone they don't have anything to defend or protect them for example wouldn't that look so much prettier look this is a very strong pawn chain this is the base of the pawn chain black can very can basically touch it how can he attack it okay he can move his queen but we can easily defend this and everything else is defended extremely well as opposed to moving this pawn the c pawn and then the d pawn is all by itself kind of weak so this was one puzzle, very, very important pattern of isolated pawns. And that will be our topic. Now we have an easy topic for next week to look at many more isol many more not isolated pawns. Discovered checks and discovered captures. And I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.